Hey guys, Cal Kellogg here. I was actually supposed to be out kayak fishing today, but uh, I checked the forecast last night and it was gonna be 91 degrees up in Tahoe. And uh, man, I, I didn't wanna drive for a couple hours to fish for a couple hours. And I didn't wanna sit out there and fry in the sun either. So I decided my time would be better spent today, um, you know, kind of standing around the homestead and doing some work on my kayak. And uh, I have had a lot of requests um, to give an overview of my Hobie Pro Angler 14 and to also cover how I transport the kayak. So I'm gonna cover a lot of that stuff today and I'm making a few different videos. So hang on and uh, I will be right back and uh, we'll check out my kayak, my trailer, and uh, hopefully you guys find it informative. I love kayaking. I would encourage you to get into kayaking. It's a great sport. It's a great way to fish, whether you fish for trout or saltwater stuff bass, whatever. It, uh, it's a game changer, man. I love my power boats, but uh, I, I, I will always own a kayak. Anyway, let's get started. Think lead core lines obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. Okay, we're back. I apologize for any background noise, my cat's meowing and stuff, and I am here at my house. So here's a long shot showing my my entire trailer, my Hobie Pro Angler 14 is, is mounted on the trailer. And you see those, uh, those pieces of white PVC pipe up above there. That's where I put my wife's Hobie compass when we're going on a trip together. So let me step in a little closer and uh, we'll check out the trailer and uh, just show you the modifications I made to the trailer. It is a utility trailer that I got from Tractor Supply. It was $799 on sale, if I remember correctly. So. Let's take a step down and uh, get a little bit closer. Okay, so here we are at the back of the trailer and uh, you know my kayak's dirty because I use it a lot and I'm doing some work on it right now so the hatches and stuff are open. But uh, anyway, here we are at the back of the trailer, kind of facing up into my truck there. Um, when I bought this trailer, it had a, a big flop down door. The door latched right there. Has a, there's a hinge still left there. Well, I removed that door which, which was, a, was a chore. I did it with a hammer and a chisel and an angle grinder, but uh, that was my first modification. I removed that, and uh, you can see down there, I put a piece of siding um, on the side of the deck where my kayak was gonna sit because it's got this like diamond-shaped, you know, kind of like lath or wire, whatever you'd call that, and I didn't want my kayak sitting directly on that because it looked pretty abrasive if the kayak was was bouncing around so anyway that's kind of the back we'll talk about how i got the kayak strapped down here in a second but let's kind of let's kind of walk around here you'll notice that the trailer it had a small i think it's about 12 inches high a small side rail that went around on three sides which is fine but it did present a problem here when we get around to the front of the kayak because as you can see the nose of the kayak, it, it, it sticks out beyond the wall on the trailer to get it, you know, to get the rear end of the kayak back in here where it needs to be. So what I did is I, I used the angle grinder. I removed part of that wall, this, this, this side wall right here. And at first I just padded it with foam. That worked okay. But uh, as time went on, you can kind of see down there, I used bolts and two by fours, marine carpet, and I just framed this opening out to the size I wanted. And that allows me, you know, when I go and I, I launch the kayak, it, uh, it allows me to, to just slide the kayak, you know, onto the trailer and then just pull it all the way up until it fits, it fits firmly in the, in the space that I framed there. I, I put a rope on it. I drive off the ramp. I'm out of everybody's way. And then I proceed to, you know, lock down the kayak, put away all my stuff, stuff like that. But uh, I thought I put a, I put a fair amount of thought into this and uh, I just, that, that's my gauge for how far forward I'm going and stuff like that. It works well. Um, I probably could have framed it out a little bit better and I'm sure at some point in the future I will disassemble it and uh, frame it out again a little bit better. Um, along the side, you know, I use some, some pool floaty here to kind of pad the side of the kayak and uh, I, I, I use four 
ratchet straps on the trailer. And I actually, I played with these a good deal and then I, I drilled out, I drilled out the trailer and I actually put eyes in there. I use clips. Um, I have this one here on the nose that goes, you know, attaches to the kayak there, goes through the nose and it pulls this way. Then here at the back, I have kind of the same system here. I have one that connects there, goes through the, the handle on the back of the kayak and ends up right down there, drilled in. And then I have the two straps that kind of go around the waist of the kayak. I have this one right here, goes across right there. And I'm actually going to end up moving that one because I've added some accessories to the kayak that, that kind of make that, that strap not work anymore. And I have another strap right here that goes across. Now, a good tip is you never want these straps tight when you're storing the kayak. I had it strapped down. I was going to go somewhere this morning, but I always back them off when the kayak is in storage. And, you know, my last piece of gear is this box right here. Um, and we'll open it up. I'll show you the inside. It is just a Home Depot. Um, it's kind of a big utility box. Let me pop this loose and I'll get right back with you. Okay, so let's have a peek in that in that big storage tote. Um, this is where, you know, I've got my uh, sonar unit there. I've got my little little hook there. I've got my pedal drive there. And uh, when Gina goes with me, I can get both pedal drives in there, um, her tackle box, stuff like that. And then, you know, when I'm when I'm when I get back home, I just grab the box. I grab the box right here, lift it out, wheel it in the garage. Everything's stored away. Nice and simple, um, easy peasy. Other than that, trailer's all, all standard. Um, it's been bulletproof. It works really well. Um, my kayak, my kayak's heavy. I'm not gonna lie to you, my kayak is heavy. Um, and it just makes sense for me to move it like this. I mean, it, it weighs a couple hundred pounds at least. And uh, I used to put it up in the back of my F-150 and stuff like that. And of course, with the Suburban now, I would have to put it up on the roof or something. And that is, that is just not happening. So I launch it. I treat it, you know, just like a boat. I take it to the boat ramp. I launch it. I retrieve it. And, uh, and that's it. One of the more unique aspects of my trailer is the fact that uh, Wes Ward, my partner here on FHS, he put a, uh, a lumber rack on it. He had a lumber rack for a pickup truck in his garage. And it adjusts, you know, it's a, it's adjustable for width. So he mounted that on my trailer and that enabled me to put those two runners up there where I put Gina's kayak. Um, the two by fours, they're, they're not the best. They sagged. I need to take those off there, um, replace them with some kind of uh, steel track, then go ahead, mount the PVC back on top of that. But uh, her, her compass, it weighs about 74 pounds, loads up no problem slide it up there strap it on and and uh, we are on the road and uh, we just you know kind of reverse the process when we're at the lake hers comes off first then I float mine off and uh, we go from there so anyway that's a that's a pretty pretty unique feature and if you have you know a uh, second kayak taking your girlfriend your wife whatever you might consider an arrangement like that it works very well boy I'll tell you what I made the Made the right call not going fishing this morning. It is hot. Um, it's barely 10 o'clock in the morning. It is hot here. Um, anyway, I hope that little walk around my trailer is helpful. Um, that's how I transport my Hobie. Um, you could certainly get them up in a roof rack. You could put them in the bed of a pickup. But uh, as I said, you know, my kayak, it's a couple hundred pounds. I got a lot of gear in there and uh, just made sense for me to put it on a trailer. I also wanted a utility trailer. So when I want to, you know, put some stuff in my trailer, I just slide the kayak out. I have a trailer to use. So it's just been, you know, good all the way around, but I really appreciate having the kayak on the trailer. It's easy to launch, easy to retrieve. I have plenty of room for my stuff. And uh, with a little bit of practice, launching and retrieving it has become a really efficient operation. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. If you don't have a kayak, you should really consider getting one. I'm signing off for now. If you're looking for trout fishing gear or any kind of fishing gear, rods, reels, and more, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. I'm out of here. I'm going to work on my kayak now. I will catch you guys next time right here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys.